Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of data analysis, specifically stem and leaf plots and line plots, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. Line plots are sometimes called dot plots. And yes, they are still a thing apparently for 6th grade students. You've been dealing with dot plots or line plots and stem and leaf plots since the 3rd and 4th grade. There's not much more you can do with those in sixth grade, except try to match data from one to the other. So if we have a line plot over here on the left, and we're going to make our stem and leaf plot, the biggest thing that you need to remember about the stem and leaf plot is there's always going to be a key. They're always going to let you know what the stem and leaf plot is. And so a simple key might be something like this, a two, a slash and then a one so that's going to represent our stem and our leaf and that's going to equal 21. So in most cases you're going to look at the stem and leaf plot as simple place value. So in this case our stem is going to be our tens place and our leaf is going to be our ones place. Why they call it a stem and leaf plot we'll never know. So in this line plot what we have to realize is that every time we see an x here that's going to represent a time that that particular number is in our data set. So we have the number 30, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So it's kind of cumbersome. But what we're going to do is we're going to write a stem of three because the three is in the tens place. And we have six thirties. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. So this three in the stem and then these six zeros in the leaf, that represents six number thirties. The next number in our data set is 35. We've got four of those. So we're just going to add on to our three stem and we're going to add three more fives. Actually, we're going to make that four fives to match what's in the data set. Now we do have a number right here that is not labeled, but we're just, we're just going to use our power of intuition to realize that that is the number 38 because it is two away from 40 and it is three greater than 35. And that means we need to put a few eights over here. Now, once we hit this right here in our line plot, now we're going to get into a new stem because the four is in the tens place. So we've got one, two, three forties, and we're going to try our best to line up the zeros. Pretend like these are in a little bit of a, some columns here. So we've got a 43 right here, only one of those. So we are going to put a 3 right here, and then we're going to put 45, one, two of those, and we're going to line those up under these zeros here. And then we've got a few, one, two, three, and it looks like that's going to be 48. So we're just going to put that there, and that's really all we're doing here. This 50 is going to be its own stem, and then we're just going to put one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the most difficult thing you're probably going to do with a stem and leaf plot and a dot plot is try to make one match the other. So now it's your turn. I've given you a stem and leaf plot over on the right and your job is to turn it into a line plot like one you see over here on the left. Each time you see a number you can just go ahead and rep represent with an X and the key down here is letting us know that our stems are slightly different. In this case, the 10 in the stem is going to represent the hundreds in the tens place because a 10 and then a slash and then two actually means 102. So this 10 and then a three in the leaf actually stands for 103. This 11 and zero in the leaf stands for 110. So using that, try to fill out this line plot, pause the video, and when you're all done, unpause it, we'll check our work. So let's see what this would look like. We have 103, so I'm just going to put one X right there. We have two 104s, and kind of like what we did with our stem and leaf plot, try to put the X's in rows so you can kind of look at them, and they can all be kind of in the same row horizontally. So that's all we have for the 100s. Now we've got the 110s. I've got one X, two X's for 110, and then one way over here for 119. And then finally, we've got a lot of 120s. We've got 120, 121, 122, and then two 123s. And that's all we're going to do. 
with our stem and leaf plots and our line plots, sharing information from one with the other.